What is up y'all? Welcome back. Today we're going to be doing an update to my everyday makeup routine and this is not something that I necessarily regularly update. I do my top shelves and you get to see how I do my makeup pretty much in every video. I, I apply a full face of makeup in almost every video if you're new here, but I thought that this was worthwhile because a lot has changed recently because I've been going through it with my skin. <laughs> I've been having a fresh bout of acne. My skin is really stressed and it's just just been changing the whole game for me like one thing will make me have to adjust for another thing and I just get frustrated midway through the day when I look at what has happened to what I used to think was a perfectly good phase of makeup and it's just it's just change it's not necessarily something that's like oh I'm aging or oh I'm you know it's just change and so if you're dealing with acne and discoloration and stressed skin and you're like me maybe you got like drier combo skin dry normal combo like you know things where it's like your skin can get dehydrated looking if you are stressed out and maybe not getting enough sleep etc then hopefully this will be helpful for y'all the main challenge for me in this routine has been finding the right products to make my makeup look like natural and hydrated by the end, but for it to stick because I need the coverage and I need the wear time. So uh, you're gonna see products that I've probably like shown a while ago, but the combination of them and also just, you know, returning to my routine, it really pays to have this gigantic collection that I have, this huge stash, because it helps me kind of do a lot of trial and error so I can share my results with y'all. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing I want to chat about is just my daily skincare. So I have my Triple Lipid Restore 242 on from SkinCeuticals. It's a moisturizer that doesn't disturb the way that my makeup goes on. There are a few things that can do that. I usually say that like the Phytosurgeons Verdant Force Field is going to do a really good job of being a moisturizer that doesn't disturb, doesn't change the way your makeup goes on. It's not going to make it slippier or anything like that. Great on your makeup. Also, the vitamin rich face base from Bobbi Brown, you know, if a little fragrance doesn't bother you, it's a very good kind of, you know, primer moisturizer. And as far as my sunscreen is concerned, I've been using a K-Beauty one. I'll put it on the screen. It's a, like a, I don't even remember what it's called. It got sent to me by Stylevana a while ago. And I, I don't know, I've just been working through it because it's not slippy. Lots of mineral sunscreens are really slippy. <laughs> So another thing here, and this was a recommendation from my friend Natalie of my skin trust. This is the Equilibrium Intensive Hydrating Eye Balm from Hourglass. And it is so excellent for the people like me who, regardless of acne and regardless of how discombobulated the rest of my complexion is, I still need my under eyes to be hydrated so that they can you know, have their best chance of not creasing over the course of the day. So it is, it's like every single step is about hydration without compromising too much of the wear time. So this is just a really lightweight, lovely, kind of like, I don't know, it's almost like a, it's not an oil, but it has a really balmy thing to it, but it doesn't add a bunch of slip underneath my eyes. And I really feel like it helps immensely for my hydration and it absorbs quickly. So it's super expensive. It's $82, I think. And I bought this during the Sephora sale, but if there's, you use so little of it that, I mean, you know, I, they'll bury it with me. So the next thing is priming, right? Priming has been really important because my skin, I don't know how it's gonna be. <laughs> I wake up and I don't, depending on how I slept or what I did the day before or what skincare I did the night before or whatever, because I am trying to clear my skin. So I'm using like colics and like salicylics and I don't know, just all sorts of stuff. I need something to bring my skin back to some kind of equilibrium as it were. And for that, I have kind of two things, right? There is the Ciate Dewy Skin Vitamin C Glass Glow Primer. And then I have the Victoria Beckham by Augustinus Bader Cell Rejuvenating Priming Moisturizer. What these have in common is that they add to the wear time because they're gripping a little bit gripping, like they act as really good primers in that sense without adding slip but they're like hydrating and plumping on the skin. Now the Victoria Beckham one, I'm gonna be using the golden one today because I don't know, I'm just kind of getting a little bit tan or freckly or something and I just feel like it's appropriate. I'm gonna use this one today. It doesn't add as much dewiness. This one obviously is called dewy skin and this is fantastic if what you're going for is actually like a dewy outcome at the end. It's absolutely beautiful. I use it constantly. So, you know, click back through a couple more of my videos at where I'm actually applying makeup and you'll see it because I've been using the daylights out of it. So 
here we have the Victoria Beckham. I'm just gonna do like one little pump here. So I have been taking the Hindash approach lately of just being extra conscious of applying my makeup in thin layers. When I don't have any real skin issues to speak of, I have the luxury of just kind of slamming everything on. And if it wears off and my skin shows through, it's not that big of a deal. But I feel like you can see a much more noticeable, not even line of demarcation, it's just like the way that things wear off. It's usually in unflattering places if they do wear off right now. And I just, after I put so much time into my makeup, like I'm not trying to say like your skin is wrong if your blemishes are showing through or whatever, sorry. I also have KP and so like I'll just reach up and find a keratosis. It's like driving me crazy. But yeah, it's not that like you have to cover everything, you know, to leave the house and be presentable to the world. It's just like, if I'm gonna put that much work into a full face of makeup, I'd like it to last. And it either is gonna last all day or it's gonna die in the first hour. That's just how it seems to go with me. So that's how that looks. It has a little bit of sheen to it, but we are gonna be going in with something with a good bit of coverage on the foundation. So it's not that big of a deal. Again, it doesn't super matter whether I use the golden or just the regular unpigmented one. But the main thing is just this really nice kind of hydrated plumpness that it gives to my skin. So I've gone from the Sublimage Luton, which is still, you know, my favorite ride or die foundation. I love it so much. I almost feel like this is a little bit more for like my winter skin because it's so hydrating. It's, if you've never used the Sublimage Luton, but you have, you look how much I've used, <laughs> it's crazy. If you have used the Shantikai Future Skin Gel, very, very similar. This is even a little bit more elevated than that and a little bit more coverage. I feel like it also lends itself more to buildability and sheerness. It has a much larger spectrum of the amount of coverage that you can decide to get from it on any given day. But I do think that Chanel, for all of their shortcomings in shade ranges and things like that, I mean, shout out to Kai in their shade ranges, lots of brands in their shade ranges, it's stupid. I do think that Chanel has so many foundation formulas and they're almost all great that they're there's just kind of an answer in my collection in the form of a Chanel foundation for just about everything that I would need. So in this case, it's the number one to Chanel, the Red Camellia Revitalizing Foundation. I have this in the shade B10. I decided to give this a whirl again because my needs were just not being met by the, my complexion routine prior to it. Because again, I just need the grip, but I also need the coverage, but I need it to not dry my skin out. I have dry skin already. I don't know, just in my mind palace, I thought of it and I was like, actually like that's kind of sparking joy for me in terms of what I think that I need right now. And I have not been able to put it down since because it will be the end of my day. And I will look at myself in the flip down mirror of truth in the car and this still looks really good. It's also a great skin tone match. So that part is personal, but if it wears off and wears in, it's not very noticeable because it's a very, very good match for me in B10. So I'm gonna be putting this on and it's not wildly full coverage. I think that's the other thing that I really like about it is that I feel confident that my skin is showing through, but it is obscuring. Just the, you know, the unevenness. Like that's the main thing for me is just that when you are doing a lot of chemical exfoliation, trying to get rid of pigmentation, what it does is it draws the pigmentation up. <laughs> it like pulls it to the surface. And so it kind of gets a lot worse looking before it gets better. And I don't care what anybody says, okay? Like you feel better when you don't have to think about it. If it's something that bugs you, putting some makeup on it, even if it's just a little bit of Glossier stretch concealer to just like, take it off your mind. It's a really, really healthy thing for your, your brain. I think everybody should be able to do that. I think that makeup should be for everybody because there's, sure, there's strength in changing your face or whatever, like that's fun, but there's also just a lot of mental health and like self-care to be had in being able to hide a blemish when it's something that really bugs you, you know? Especially on top of everything else. Like when you're having a stressful life, <laughs> When you're having a stressful life, right? Taking one stressor off the table can make all the difference in the world. You know what I mean? It can just make, it can make your life a little bit more doable that day. And sometimes that's all we need is to just conserve our spoons. If it can help you conserve a spoon, you know, by God, do it. It was actually really funny when we were on that influencer trip to Charleston. Kelly was just having a time one night. 
I hope it's okay that I tell this story. I don't think it's embarrassing. She was just kind of like having a bunch of stuff not go well. And at one point, I don't remember, it was like she was already like stressed out about something and I could see that she was kind of starting to break a sweat. And then she ripped her skirt and it was like a vintage skirt that, you know, couldn't be repaired. She ripped it in a spot right in the front that like you couldn't repair without it being really obvious. And I could just see her like, <laughs> this close to I don't know what but just like needing to excuse herself like she was just kind of like mm -hmm, too many things all at once she's like got this you know mountain of gorgeous hair that she's like curled and everything and she goes I just need a hair tie and I just like stuck my wrist out and gave her a hair tie <laughs> that Amanda had given me because I probably was like that close to a meltdown earlier or whatever and it was just hilarious how like a hair tie was able to just like <sighs> give her one modicum of like peace so that she could collect herself and we've all been there okay like if you're having a time if you're having a day a hair tie or covering a blemish could be the difference between having a meltdown and not having a meltdown okay and i think that it's mentally healthy so you can see that like while that is a like beautiful shade match and a beautiful coverage level and a beautiful texture on my skin. And actually you can see a little bit of the radiance of the primer through it. I think that it's a really like comfortable thing to wear every day. I don't look like I'm going to my wedding, you know? And if you're a full coverage matte person on the everyday, like, and that's what you feel comfortable in, then like more power to you. It's just like not, it, it never looks particularly okay on me. This is just so much more believable, you know? And I'm always kind of going for believable. I don't wanna like clock myself in the mirror. Just be like, what girl, what is that? But the next thing I wanna go in with is some under eye corrector, but I'm gonna go kind of in a bunch of places because it does a really good job. This is the Beauty Pie one, but it's really similar to the Becca one. NARS is coming out with one, but it doesn't look like they have anything that's in this kind of like, baby pink you know the baby pink is really the one for me and i like the reflective quality of it but the main reason is from a color theory standpoint the kind of like gray that tends to show through underneath my eyes it wouldn't typically bother me that much but what it does is it actually makes the eye recognize the gray of healing blemishes more it like brings it out and so if you can kind of take extra measures to cancel that out and then, you know, the same product can work in several places. You don't have to put on as much concealer. This is actually a, I feel like, a much more accommodating texture of product than any concealer that I've used. I would say that Glossy Stretch Concealer is similar to this. It's a little soupier, but it's not particularly long wearing. This does help, I feel like, with the wear time, but also, on me especially, as I'm using all these actives and stuff, I'm still having my skin like healing underneath my makeup throughout the day. And so it might start to get like dried out and peely and very obvious. And it's not so much that I care that someone else sees that. It's just like, if it's distracting, I might pick it if I get close to a mirror or something. If I like, you know, overhead lighting, something way too revealing. It, there's a chance that, you know, I could it could do more harm than good. So in order to like leave it alone for myself, it's so helpful to have something that isn't just helping add like a dimension of coverage, but also that it's keeping it from getting peely because it does have quite a bit of castor oil in it. And so it's like helping to hydrate my skin while it heals. Once you start to see what that does, you kind of get carried away with it. And there's nothing wrong with getting carried away with it, but I am, again, still <laughs> abiding by the, the Hindash philosophy of like, some is good. That doesn't mean that more is better. Like, and if you're gonna put more on, like do it in thin layers anyway because I'm gonna use the Givenchy concealer and it's unbelievably effective for a face of makeup like this, but I still recommend applying it in thinner layers because it is kind of a multi-use complexion product. You could use it as a foundation and then also use it as your concealer. So it is designed to build. And so in order for something to build, it's kind of like putting on nail polish. You do thin layers so that everything has a chance to like do what it's supposed to do. If you try and just apply it in one big globby layer, it's never gonna dry and it's just gonna make your life harder. That's my philosophy. That's my completely unscientific philosophy. Already looking vastly improved. And in fact, I have been leaving the house lately with like stretch concealer on or just color corrector on or whatever, just to kind of, again, like get it off my mind. It's not about necessarily having to do like a full beat all the time, 
But I do feel like every step does contribute to something, you know, and when I get done, I feel really, really beautiful. So that's why this has been my everyday. I should say also, it's been a lot worse lately. If you're looking at my skin right now and you're like, it's really khaki, like what are you even complaining about? It was real bad. It was like not just, you know, blemishes and discoloration. It was like active breakouts and active breakouts add a whole other layer of stress because there are sometimes like, what? <laughs> they're wet, you know, because they're like not like they're open or they hurt so bad. I had this huge like eyeball right here that was like trying to be something last week. And I put on one of those hero, whatever, I'll put it on the screen. I can't remember what they're called, but my friend Hallie gave them to me. They're those pimple patches that are like heavy duty. They're for new blemishes that are like, you know, under the skin like that. And they have little spikes in them and you push them for like 20 seconds on it to almost, you know, to just kind of like micro penetrate the skin and get the medicine in there. Game changer, game changer. It was gone in two days. So I can still see a little bit of, again, like just the discoloration underneath the skin, but like it never came to a head. It never got bigger, but my goodness, while it was there, it hurts so much. And that's another thing is like, it can be so distracting and so painful. Sometimes, actually often, I mean, I'll just take an Advil. <laughs> when I'm like really broken out, I will just take an Advil because it's gonna help with all the pain and all the inflammation. And again, give me one fewer reason to go pick my face in some kind of like, desperate need for a solution, even though picking is never a solution. But the reason that it's getting better, <laughs> y'all, this is so stupid. The reason that it's getting better is because I realized it's from eating gluten, which, I, you know, I just watched Jamie French's video on Ozempic. Like she was on Ozempic for a while and I highly recommend watching it because I feel like it's so nuanced. It's really not for me to like sum it up. It's such like a firsthand account, but she does talk about how you will lie to yourself about the true cause of something. <laughs> if it's what you really think you want, you'll be like, it's anything other than this one thing. And so I did recently discover after being gluten-free for, you know, 10 years or so that like I can get away with having some gluten in my diet. And I was like pretty pumped about it, you know, because your girl, like, you know, a lot of people are probably like, oh, you just want to eat like desserts or whatever. It's hamburgers. I love a hamburger with a bun. I've been eating hamburgers without a bun for so long that like a hamburger with a bun is just bliss. You get everything in one bite. You get your pickles, your cheese, your ketchup, your the burger. It's, it's just so good. And I had been indulging quite a bit and then I went to Europe and indulged quite a bit. And then I went to Charleston and indulged quite a bit. And my stomach was never giving me any red flags as far as my symptoms returning like the bloating and the malnourishment and things like that that I had had when I was like 25 because I've been eating all organic. I, my life changed when I, I decided to you know go all organic. So I think that that's what kind of keeps me at such a low level of inflammation that I can like you know use my gluten credits quote unquote but I was I was overdrafting on my gluten credits. I was getting a little carried away and I did one of those I googled and I was like, okay, so I know that there are those maps of your face, right? That tell you like what areas of a breakout, what they mean, like what they correspond to in the rest of your body. And I'm familiar with like the hormone ones and what a stomach, stomach and liver right here. <laughs> and I was like, okay, fine, fine. So anyway, that's, this is like where we're at on complexion. And what I'm gonna do is let it kind of chill for as long as I can without powdering it because I feel like my skin is gonna just kind of like keep it, absorbing it, letting it melt in and it's gonna keep improving. And then I can kind of smooth it out before I powder it because my under eyes just love to crease no matter what. But we're gonna go with like my, you know, my contour, my bronzer and stuff next. I had been using a lot of powders just out of impatience because it is an easier way to get coverage and then just you know douse myself in mac fix plus or something to try and achieve a dewy look but i still found that it was like creasing more it's still something that i'll do in a pinch though but we're working very quickly through my makeup by mario skin enhancer here and this is going to be just a really nice cream bronze for what we're working with here this is one of those things that again 
I will use this when I'm wearing almost nothing else on my skin because it's so subtle and so effective. I'm applying this with the dump truck brush, the 105 from BK. I don't know, I never mention it, but I do have a code with BK. I think it's 10% off down there. It's always at the bottom of my description. So I really like this because it's not just a great kind of sheer formula, but it's also a really good color. You see how much like, almost like beige is in that, you know? So it's not giving me orange. I really like all the formulas from Makeup by Mario in the light shade because light, it just is the right color for me. And I can just take that on my neck too. Whatever's left on the brush. And I mean, honestly, you can see, like, I'm not able to pick up a ton of product here anyway. So like it, we're going really, really surely with that. And even though it is a cream that is a little bit like, I don't know, gel in finish, I still feel like it does a good job of like participating with other products. Next, I'm going to do some contour. I'm gonna use my Uma. This is another really, really effective contour because you don't have to use very much of it. It spreads really thinly and evenly for a cream and you barely have to put like actually any on your skin. So again, thin layers in mind. And what you'll see I, that I do is I just, I almost push forward. So it's like you're kind of pushing against that bone right there. And that's how I get my cheek contour so that it doesn't look silly because I am, I'm a big fan of a contour. Look at that snatched. And I should say some stuff that hasn't worked. So like I said, this has not been working as well because it is so like hydrating. I know it sucks, but like I have to find ways to like get something to be thinner on my skin than that. Not quite so bouncy, which is just such a shame because the finish on that is so beautiful. What's so interesting, I was on that trip to Charleston, like I said, and there were so many girls there with like different skin needs and like talking to them about our favorite products. It was so enlightening because you realize how everybody has these really specific needs and it's not any kind of affront to your favorite product. It's there's so many moving parts that could make something not work for somebody that works beautifully for you and then your skin changes and then you realize you're like, oh wow, like it's that simple. It's that simple that something could go from being my dream product to like just not working for me right now. This is another thing that I like really am eager to get more use out of because it's so awesome. I think that the biggest thing that I'm excited about is how it's like almost exactly the same color as like my under eye corrector. So I'm like, yes, put that all over my face. Absolutely. So this is the new Kosa's Dream Beam, but it does add slip and it's like not helping, you know? I need something, I don't know, that doesn't have any texture of its own really in an SPF, so that's been a little bit annoying, but like I can't wait to get back to it. I cannot wait. Highlighters in general have not been working. Everything kind of wants to gather right here. Although I did just get an amazing email from an amazing viewer who works for Lightstim. And she said, Khaki, I've been watching your channel for so long and I know how much you've always wanted the light stem for wrinkles. She's like, I've been working tirelessly for years to try and get them to send you one. And I finally got them to do it. And so I just got like the uh, shipping notification that she is sending me the light stem for wrinkles because I love the light stem for acne so much. It's so effective. So yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I can't wait to do like before and afters on my like little cutie crow's feet, just to see, just to see, you know? Okay, so I think that we are in powder territory now. I don't wanna go too nuts, but I do think I want a little more concealer underneath my eyes, just a little. It's so pretty. If I haven't gushed enough about this Givenchy concealer, allow me to gush a little bit more because it's just so hydrating and flexible. I have it in the shade N95. It's a fantastic, color for me. It's like creamy and it dries down to a really beautiful texture. So now that we've got everything kind of how we want it, right? Just, you know, contoured and bronzed. Like this is very much like the complexion look and then we'll go in with like color, right? So I'm gonna use some of my Kosas and I would typically use this on my little Rattly Natalie brush, but I'm actually gonna go for a bigger brush in this case. Rattly Natalie is the BK 108. It's like, it's small, but I'm actually gonna be powdering a little more aggressively here. I really want to actually set everything, but the beauty of the Kosas is that it actually leaves behind such a flattering finish. And I'm gonna be careful 
as I'm putting this over my nose and stuff to not get it all the way on my cheeks, but to have a nice like gradual <laughs> gradient and then powder that spot. That's my worst spot right now is like the front and center of my forehead and powdering it makes all the difference in the world, especially with this. It doesn't have any kind of, I don't think glitter or anything to it, but it just has a brightening quality to it that I, again, there have been a lot of products that haven't worked. So the Laura Mercier, the new Laura Mercier powder is too radiant. I caught myself y'all in the sunshine the other day, having used that new NARS powder, I don't know what I did with it. It made me look like I was covered in tinsel. It was so strange. So I don't know about that one yet. Jury's out. And then like even something like the Ami Cole powder, too mattifying, you know? So it is about kind of finding that happy balance. And this is my happy balance right now. So we are you know, firmly in a nice like radiant hybrid finish territory. I'm gonna be honest. Lately with my makeup, with my eye makeup, I have been the opposite of adventurous because once I've gone this far in the direction of trying to like triage my skin on any given day, I want to play it so safe on my eyes. So I've actually been using my bronzers and my contours as my eye products, which is probably a good demonstration for my channel anyway, <laughs> just because I think it's really important to remember that you don't necessarily need, you know, a bunch of neutral eyeshadows. You can use what you're already using on your skin. So this is the Victoria Beckham Matte Bronzing Brick. And like, could I, should I? you know, go in with like hand dash color fluid, probably, but like on my everyday, am I? Not really. It's because this isn't gonna be a really like high impact, a lot of color, need it to stick, need it to be true kind of look. It's actually more like I want my eyes to just kind of go with everything else and you know, it already has some primer on it. So this is the lighter shade and you can tell like it's just such a nice, subtle flattering kind of shadow really adds something you know and i will then take the deeper color on the same brush the way that i use shadow and light to create the illusion of my eyes being farther apart and bigger is by using a cooler tone right in here you know you're kind of poking this outer corner into the socket so like past your eyeball and using that to then obscure the natural edge of your eye and kind of pull it up and I'm using I'm just like making an effort to use this real estate because I have a lot of it you know like there's just a lot of space right here so using that and pretending that that is still you know part of my actual eye area proper doing that on this side as well this is a great great really kind powder formula for all like maturing skin and stuff like it's just so finely milled but it also has a lovely like grip to it no fallout and i also just like using a bronzer or something as my eye makeup because it's a like a slower build it's a little bit more subtle and you already know that it's a color that works on your skin you see how blurring that is so pretty it's like one fewer thing to pack when you're traveling too so i'm going back in with the lighter shade and just blurring the edges of that You can use your actual contour powder. So I probably will be finishing with this. This is the Natasha Denona and it is a lot, lot, lot cooler than either of those. This is my powder contour. And like, is this an absolutely necessary step? No, but like, I'm gonna be putting powder contour on. So I want kind of the typo typography, the topology of my eyes to like match my face. And so what you can do too is like kind of ride the natural contours of your eyes with the brush. It's like, oh, okay, I'm putting contour on, I'm building an illusion, but underneath my eyes also has a little bit of like a contour to it. And all I'm doing is like making the whole look more believable to the eye because I am, you know, following what's already there naturally and enhancing it. See, you would think, oh, don't put something like right there. It's gonna make it look like your eyes are like, you know, under eye bags or whatever, but I don't know, I think it's sexy. So now you have 
the foundation built on your eyes to do pretty much anything you want, right? I mean, you could keep applying more eyeshadow, you know, deeper, darker, and like get something really dramatic, but all we've done so far is basically like contour and bronze my entire face and just use that to like enhance what's there. So we can make any number of decisions here. I think that the way that I'm feeling like the most healthy looking right now, and this will shock exactly no one, is just with really good like peachy pink colors. So I'm gonna start with something pink and then I'm going to go in with something peach and then we'll probably do the same thing on my eyes, possibly even with the same product. And if you're new here, what I tend to do a lot of times, and this is sort of a more recent development, maybe in the last year or so, when I'm buying blushes to try, I tend to buy them in the same two colors or you know whatever is the closest thing in that blush range so that it's easier for me to kind of compare one to the next for y'all because that's why I have this like wild library of makeup, right? I don't want every shade of every formula unless it's that new NARS blush. But in this case, I bought two of the new Armani blushes and they're in 30 and 50. This is 30, this is 50. And you can see pink coral, pink coral. That's my thing. I've got, you know, tons of different blushes and stuff in the pink coral duo. So the way that I like to do that is I use something like this pink first. It has a little bit of a shimmer to it and that's going to make it go on actually more sheerly. And it's also a little bit cooler toned than this. And cool tones, what? They recede from the eye. This is art math. And warm tones, something with just a little more like, you know, orangey yellow to it is going to give the illusion that it's coming towards you. So it's going to add a little more pop to the look. So. I'm gonna use that same brush that I used for my powder. I don't know, I probably have another one of these now because Lisa did give us so many on the trip, which is fantastic, but this is just the one that I have on hand. So again, this is the BK104. I have a hair stuck to me, I see you. So, starting with 50, picking that up on this brush, and I'm gonna work all the way, like in this area that's kind of bald, right? So we have the contour, the bronzer is like kind of everywhere-ish, but, I feel like outside of the contour, you can really see where blush would belong, right? And it's just kind of in that bald area. We're just gonna color it in. I'm taking it kind of drapey style all the way up into the hairline. What we're going for is soft, soft, soft hair. And you'll see, I don't buff very much. I just kind of, I just kind of tippy tap because we are working with some different textures. I'd rather not, you know, piss anybody off unnecessarily disturb anybody. So it's kind of a flicking motion to get the product to go down, but not pick up, you know? Flick, flick, flick. So typical of me, it's a lot of blush. I know that it is. And we haven't even finished putting on the blush yet. But to me, it's about making my skin look like it normally would. If it were like really healthy and I'd been outside or whatever, like I want that nice healthy flush. I am a red cheeked kind of girl. You should see my kid. Oh my God. He always has these like super flushed cheeks and I'm like, me too. So now we're going to go in with 30. This just <laughs> absolutely beautiful coral color. And you'll see what it does is it kind of fills in the gaps, right? And it's just gonna give us this really lovely soft, and I'm only applying that, it's like if you imagine the area that I just put the pink, I'm gonna kind of like shrink that area down to a little bit more concentrated spot, and that's where I'm putting the coral. Tip of the nose makes a huge difference. And also, you know, experiment with different blush shapes because, you know, taking this all the way, especially this being more of a sunburn shade, taking it all the way across the top of my nose can make a big difference. It just looks, just looks really cute. And if you're like, wow, that's really like glowing. Guess what? You put some in your eye look and it all makes sense. I just love the texture that it puts on my skin. It's all gonna melt together. Like I said, this is an area right here that just tends, I think I have like more mammalian hair there than, you know what I mean? Than I do on the rest of my face. And so it's been kind of gathering right there but I'm not too worried about it. I, once I spray it with some Fix Plus, it's fine and it's something only I notice. So there we have some beautiful, beautiful blush. And we're gonna go in with that on my eyeballs as well because it really, you'll see, it really, really helps. And this is all gonna be in these very like soft shapes. We're not doing any like super specific detail work. 
I'm gonna pull it, you know, all the way across onto my lids. It's just kind of gonna be this soft coat over everything. Not everything, everything, because like I don't like to pull anything all the way to the inner corner that isn't light, you know? Because if I darken my inner corner, it makes my eyes look closer together, but do you, you know what I mean? Like that's just my own self-conscious thing. And then we'll use the coral. Probably use a slightly smaller brush for this because that's, you know, kind of the pattern of our intentions. So I'm gonna use one of Angie's brushes. Finally got to meet Angie in person. What a delightful human being. So yeah, this is her Singe Beauty E04. And I'm gonna grab that and just put it a little bit onto the lid. Now don't worry, my life is never complete without a little bit of sparkle. So I am just adding this a little bit kind of underneath on the outer corner. And then I will take a bigger brush and just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. concentrate that. It's so easy. It's just such an easy way to achieve something that looks at home. We haven't even pulled out an eyeshadow yet, you know? As far as the eyeshadows that I have been using, it's mostly, because I mean, I, again, I like a little bit of sparkle. It's mostly things that are either brown or coral. I know, shocking, right? So as far as coral, this is the one. This is the one, it's the Sequin Crush from YSL in the shade Confident Nude 06. I can't promise that I'm not gonna put all of these on my eyes today, I might, you know? And then we have Orange Blossom from Kaja, which I just learned means, let's go. <laughs> In Korean? I don't know if that's true, but that's what Kelly told me. And it's got three shades in here that are actually really useful to me, but it's that brown. That brown is the one. And then I just got this from ColourPop. I mean, I like the Coolfy one. I like the Hourglass one. There's a bunch of them that I really like. But Ritz is a color that, you know, Amanda, Amanda Z has been trying to sell me probably for years and years. And like, it's just so good. It's just so good. So I'm gonna actually start with that because it's so translucent that I can use it as like a faux, like inner corner thing and then put something else on top. But like, look how just like effortless that looks. It's just so chill. It has a tiny, tiny bit of its own pigment, you know, of, you know, laying down a color, but mostly it's just a really pretty kind of like wet look texture. It's so good. The way that it makes the light hit Makes the lids look bigger. Luxurious. Can take a little bit of that on my pinky and just add a little twinkle underneath as well. Check. And as much as I typically would like to wear the brown, I kind of just want to keep it tame today. I think that the brown requires me to go in and like deepen even more in the outer corner and stuff. So I'm just going to use the YSL on my lid. And it's almost just like coloring in what was left behind by the shape that I created with the bronzer and the contour and the blushes, you know? So can still go in with more of those, you know, on like a more concentrated brush. Like I can pull out some more of my contour because, you know, I probably covered it up a little. But the beauty of that is that it just keeps everything really soft. You still get the effect of the illusion, but it doesn't just get kind of like keep increasing in drama and you're just like, oh no. <laughs> Like, I, I have to go out in daylight and what I've just done kind of thing, so. There's that. Now there are two options for eyeliner and you will not catch me saying an unkind thing about either of these things. One is the Surat Smoky Eye Baton. It's got the eyeliner on one side and then it's got the smoky on the other side, the little sponge that has eyeshadow on it. And Tom, Hope Mess Tom, my good bud, just sent me a really great video the other day of them like trying it for the first time and they're like, yep, everything you said is true. I cannot explain why this is so good. And I could see their eyeliner and it looked, oh my gosh, so soft and so just pretty. You know what I mean? Just like this sexy, pretty eye look. And then I have the Hindash Color Fluid in Thorn, which is what I'm gonna be using today because I just have been back into a slightly more, slightly more graphic line and a little bit more control. So I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna do my mascara and I'm gonna put on my brows and then we'll come back and we'll just, you know, do lips and finishing touches and things like that. There are still a couple more steps. Daylight, you got me kind of
recently I kind of realized that the reason I'm having an annoying time doing my eyebrows is actually just that like I'm using too dark of an eyebrow pencil. So like staying the same color on my eyebrow pomade, but I actually started just filling them in with a blonde brow pencil. This is the Thrive Cosmetics Waterproof Brow Liner in Christina, which is just a much lighter shade than I would typically use and I can really go in. You know what I mean? Just like haphazardly because it's not going to make big stripes that I then have to like worry about them being even or whatever. I can just kind of, you know, which is great. <laughs> and then it's like, I actually get more definition out of my pomade, which is really nice. So I'm going to let that all chill for a second before I put in like the clear pomade to like get the definition back. But we have a few finishing touches here before we use finishing spray. So I'm gonna go in with my Victoria Beckham and this time I am going to use a small brush. I actually, I don't know where Rattly Natalie is. She's around. She's around, but she tends to kind of run off. I don't know, either way. I have my like Thrive blush brush here and I'm using the lighter shade here in the Victoria Beckham bronzing brick and I'm gonna do uh, just a touch of that. Look at that. Look at the difference that that makes in just obscuring that little bit of a bald line between my Oh great, there's glitter. There's glitter. Why is there glitter? Where did the glitter come from, khaki? How did I get glitter on my brush? I don't know, but it is what it is. That's life. So anyway, obscures the line right there and you know, just helps to kind of blend all of the little lines of demarcation that might have occurred. It also kind of fills in anywhere where I feel like it is a little bit bald in between my skin and the makeup. Boop, boop, boop. A little bit of that, a little bit of this. Then I'll take my finger with my Kosas and I'll just tap it right into the powder and go over the blemishy area. The Fix Plus is going to then kind of, you know, make everything reunited and it feels so good, but it just adds a touch more, not even coverage, just the way that the light hits it becomes a little bit less like obvious for the texture. Okay, and like I said, kind of one of my last steps is to take a contour brush, right? My Angie Hot and Flashy A507 here from BK, dip it into that same contour that I was using on my eyeballs from Natasha Denona. And the reason I do this is because matte, anything matte is going to absorb light. And so you're already trying to create a believable shadow and that shadow is going to recede from the eye. It's going to help even more if texturally you can kind of help it out by then making it not reflect light, so. A little bit of that and also <laughs> it really helps with my hairline because I have lost a fair bit of hair recently due to stress and I get a little self-conscious about it. Although I will say, even though there is some of it that's around my face, most of it is as if I got an undercut. Like that's the main spot that I'll notice growing back in. Same thing happened after I stopped breastfeeding, like all my hair fell out right there. But I feel like just adding that little bit helps Helps you have to focus on me, you know? All right, I got my Fix Plus. I do have Fix Plus Magic Radiance also, but this is just what I have right here. I don't know what happened to my Magic Radiance. It's around. I don't wanna go too, too hard, but I do want everything to get an even coat so that it gets a chance to all melt. That's what this stuff does. If you've ever watched Wayne Goss's videos, you know he talks about how Glycerin being the main ingredient in most setting mists, it actually melts your makeup. So it actually like removes some of it, <laughs> kind of. I don't know where it would be going, but it's almost the equivalent of taking something and just like wiping a little bit of it off, but obviously in a much more delicate way. That's why I appreciate it. And it's gonna help all those textures melt together. Grabbing a little bit of clear brow gel here, although it is not clear anymore. Ugh. Day to day, my opinion changes on whether I want my eyebrows to be like, you know, tall and a little wild looking or like very composed and neat. But today we're just going for a little bit more, a little bit more up, you know? And then the answer on my lips is always something clear. <laughs> like always. Lately, I have been really enjoying the Clarins lip oil. I know it's like wildly expensive for almost no product, but it smells like snow cones and it's just, I don't know, it contributes to some kind of nostalgia core for me. But I'm gonna be using the Ami Cole one today because I love it. This is excellence and it's brown, but it kind of just goes clear. And then as you can see, 
We did end up with some radiance, right? It is quite all one texture. I don't think that there is any harm in taking a little bit more powder and just very gently taking down that texture where you want it, you know? So I'm gonna grab this little hourglass brush here. It's just very like concentrated and just making sure, oh my God, that glitter, that's so stupid. <laughs> making sure that the light is not reflecting off of stuff that you find distracting to your eye. And the beauty of the Kosas is that I don't think that it really like covers up the other color that's underneath it. So it's like if you put this someplace else, it's not gonna be like, oh no, there goes my blush or my bronzer or whatever. That's basically what I do on an everyday basis. Well, I mean like if I'm doing my makeup, you know what I mean? Like that and a little, probably a little more blush. Probably a little more blush. <laughs> Just a little bit on my nose. Cut me some slack. I love blush, okay? So yeah, that gives me the confidence to go out and do life in a way that's like not about, oh, I, you know, hid all of my imperfections from the world or whatever, but again, just about this way that like makes me feel a little bit more comfortable in my skin, a little bit less distracted by, you know, the urge to pick other things that are happening on my face, things like that. And if I want to take a picture of myself or something, which tends to happen throughout the day, I feel like I don't have to like take 800 of them and like filter them or something. It's just about that little bit more confidence and that little bit more peace of mind. And the peace of mind also comes from the fact that not only do I really like the way that it looks, but it's a bunch of formulas that are gonna wear a while and they're gonna kind of keep looking good the whole day. So that's the main reason I wanted to share this with y'all is because yeah, it's you know very easy to talk about lots of different textures and formulas and colors and everything when your skin is just like glowing and perfect. But when the challenges come down the pike, Things get complicated and it's my job, essentially, and I'm proud to say so, that like, you know, as I'm putting out content, it's like I wanna be able to show you all the nuances of everything that's happening on my skin and use that to maybe help other people who are having similar, similar issues, so yeah. I think that it looks fantastic, I do. I just really like it, so I hope y'all do too and I will list everything below. I hope y'all liked this. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, please subscribe while you are here. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for being here. And I'll put a video up here that I think you'll enjoy. I love y'all so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.